If you watched my last video on the Koros Pace 2 Elliott Kipchoge edition, then you will have seen this intro. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will leave it linked up here and down here. But how exactly did I create the smoke in that intro? First things first, you're going to need one of these. This is a fish tank or an aquarium, and if you hadn't guessed it by now, that entire intro was shot underwater. The size of fish tank or aquarium that you get is actually pretty important. It needs to be big enough to house the object you actually want to shoot, so in my case the Koros Pace 2, and it needs to be small enough that every time you want to reset, it doesn't take ages to refill. That's really important. It actually takes quite a long time to refill something, even if it's as small as this one. It also needs to be big enough so that the camera can get everything in frame without getting the edges of the tank in the shot. Next, you will need a syringe, or in my case, two. This is what's gonna actually deliver your smoke into the water. Some milk, some food coloring, some fishing line, some tape, some lights, and a camera capable of shooting a high frame rate. This doesn't have to be a mirrorless camera, it could be a point and shoot, it could be your phone, whatever you've got, but it needs to be able to shoot in slow motion. You also need a black background, maybe some black paper, or like me, you've got a black wall you can shoot against. Something that's basically gonna absorb all the light so that you don't see the reflection of the glass. I have my fish tank set on top of and in front of some black paper. I have my camera set close to the front of the tank in this shot here, you can see it's actually on a slider, but in the end, I decided not to use that because there was too many moving parts. But it just needs to be close enough to the subject that you don't get any of the fish tank in the frame. Don't forget, if you do want to add some zoom, you can always add it in post. So I felt like the slider was just going to be a little bit too fiddly in the end. You also need to make sure that you don't get any reflections from your lights or the camera lens or anything else that you might be using in order to shoot the object. This is why my main source of light is coming from above the tank with some additional fill lights from either side. For my main light, I'm using my Elgato key light and that is on maximum brightness and it's directly above the tank. The camera I used to shoot is this camera I'm shooting on now, which is the Panasonic GH5. The GH5 shoots up to 180 frames a second, and that is exactly what I shot this in. Next, I wanted to be able to suspend the watch in the middle of the tank, and this is where the fishing wire comes in. Depending on your object, you might find that you want to prop it on top of something that's immersed in the water, or maybe it sits directly on the bottom of the tank. You'll have to experiment depending on what the object is that you're trying to shoot. Initially, I suspended the watch from the fish tank lid, which I thought was going to be great because I'll be able to take it in and out. Um, but that actually proved to be a bit of a pain when it came to injecting the food coloring. So in the end, I taped the fishing wire to either side of the tank. The fishing wire, for the most part, is going to remain invisible. Occasionally, it can catch the light and depending on your post skills, you may be able to mask it out or maybe it's not such a big deal. Once you've got your object suspended and you're happy with the framing of the shot, you can fill your tank with water. Now my advice here is to use warm water. Whenever I used cold water, it tended to go a little bit cloudy. I don't know if that's just cloudy water that gets supplied to my house or if it's a difference between hot and cold. I'm not really sure. I just know that it was better when I used warm water. Now, if you haven't already, it's probably at this point that you'll figure out whether your object floats or not. And if it does float, then you're probably gonna have an issue. In my case, it didn't exactly float, but it was a little bit buoyant, so I did have to weight it down, and for that, I just used some blue tack. I just attached it to the back of the watch so that you couldn't see it in the shot, and just enough so that it would sit right in the water. Now, you're pretty much ready to shoot. You just need some smoke. To create the smoke, I tried a few different techniques. Now, if you've come across this video, you've probably seen there are multiple other versions of this video on YouTube, and everybody tells you to use a different substance. 
So my advice is do what I did and experiment which works best for you. Using a pint glass, I was able to see which one I was most happy with and it also meant that I could reset really quickly. I just filmed these on my iPhone in slow motion to get the overall effect of what it would look like. I used two syringes that I had left over from some dog medication, but you can probably find these in your local pharmacy or I don't know, online. Obviously you don't need a needle and in fact it probably wouldn't be as good if you did have one. So just go for one with a reasonably wide hole that will allow enough of your liquid to come out. The first technique I tried was just the food coloring on its own. Now I actually thought that looked quite cool but it wasn't exactly the effect that I was looking for but I may experiment with that again in the future. The second is one that I'd actually seen on somebody else's video. I'll try and link it down in the description if I can find it, but they had used condensed milk. So I went and got some condensed milk and I tried it, but for me, it just came out too thick. It didn't really spread and create that smoky look that I was after. Finally, I thought I'd go for a middle ground, which was milk. So a little bit thicker than just the food coloring, but not quite as thick as the condensed milk. And this worked perfectly. And it makes total sense. It may remind you of a video that's on my channel from a few months back where I shot with the Insta360 GO 2. I used it as a probe lens. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it up here and down here. And one of the shots in that was pouring milk into a cup of tea. And that gave me the same effect as I'm using here. Once I was happy that milk was the right consistency and gave me the look that I wanted, I then dyed two batches, one red and one green to match the colors of the watch. Again, it's worth doing a little bit of trial and error in a pint glass just to get the correct color. For the main shot, timing was key. Not only did I need to inject both of the colors at once, I also needed to do it while the watch face was still illuminated and the backlight on that watch only lasts about five seconds. In addition to only having five seconds of the watch face lit, I also wanted it not to be wobbling around too much in the water, which meant after having reached into the tank to illuminate the watch, I then needed to wait for it to settle before injecting the colors. Suffice it to say, this was difficult to do with only one pair of hands, and in the end, I did get some help. When you're injecting the smoke, you wanna make sure you try and do it as consistently as possible. I found that it was best not to do it too fast, but again, you will need to do some trial and error. Then it was just a case of doing it a bunch of times. Now remember, every time you try it, you're gonna to need to reset afterwards, which means emptying the tank out and refilling it again with fresh water. I did try once to let it settle for a bit and then go again, but it was just too cloudy. So you will need to refill every time. In the end, it took me about four tries to get the shots that I wanted. And if it wasn't for how long it took to reset each time, I probably would have done it a few more times. Once I'd gone through the clips and chosen the one that I was most happy with, I needed to make a few tweaks. The first thing I did was to crop the image and that was mainly to get the tips of the syringes out of the shot which when I was shooting it, I didn't realize that they were in frame. Next, I did a basic color adjustment followed by a second color adjustment. And then I masked the face and just brightened it up a little bit because it was a little dark in the shot. I also added a vignette around the outside just to make it pop in the center. And that was it, it was done. that's the final result. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you like this video, then give me a thumbs up. If you want more content from me, then hit that subscribe button and why not hit the bell because sometimes I get a little bit lazy and there are a few longer gaps between videos, but I'm trying to sort that out. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.